Today, we have a wonderful story for you called Angels All Around. But before that, come on boys and girls, come and join us. Let's sing and praise God together. This week's lesson is entitled, Angels All Around. Boys and girls, what was the title of our lesson? Angels All Around. The memory verse is, pray for each other. James 5, 16. Let's repeat it again. Pray for each other. James 5, 16. Let's repeat it one more time. Pray for each other. James 5.16 Now it's your turn. Pray for each other. James 5.16 Great job everyone. Thank you. And thank you Misha for saying our memories. You're welcome. The message for this week's lesson is We help others when we pray for them. Before the lesson, what do we do? Yes, that's right. We pray. I have knees that bend for prayer. I have hands that fold for prayer. I have eyes that close for prayer. Now I talk to Jesus. 
Let's pray. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. As we're going to start our lesson, we're going to start our lesson about angels all around. About angels all around. And be with us. And be with us. And speak to us. And speak to us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you ever been scared of something? Like a loud storm or a big dog? Elisha's servant was afraid, but Elisha knew what to do. The king of Aram shook his fist at his army officers. I want to know who was telling the king of Israel all my secret plans, he shouted. Every time we go to attack Israel, their king knows about it. One of the army officers took a deep breath and spoke up. It's not one of us, sir. The prophet Elisha tells the king of Israel everything you say, even the words that you speak in your bedroom. Well, then find out where this Elisha is, the king of Aram shouted. The army officers hurried to send spies to look for Elisha, and soon they knew. Elisha is in the city of Dothan, they told the king. Then go capture him, the king commanded. Go tonight and surround the city. Early the next morning, Elisha's servant walked down the street. He smiled. That was until he looked outside the city and saw the army from Aram. The servant's heart pounded with fear. The servant turned around and hurried away and ran back to the house. Elisha, Elisha, he cried. The army of Aram has surrounded the city. What are you going to do? Don't be afraid, Elisha said. Come with me. The two men climbed up high so they could look over the city walls. Many horses and chariots and many, many soldiers surrounded the city. Then Elisha said to his servant, Do not be afraid, Elisha said. The army that is on our side is bigger than that army. Then Elisha prayed, Lord, open my servant's eyes. Let him see. And the Lord did open the servant's eyes. And what an amazing sight! The hills were covered with horses and chariots of fire. God's army of angels surrounded the enemy. As the enemy went toward the city, Elisha prayed again, Strike these men with blindness. Immediately, the enemy soldiers could not see. They fell over one another. Elisha climbed down and walked towards the enemy soldiers. Follow me. I will lead you. And he led them away to Samaria. There the king of Samaria asked Elisha, What should I do with these men? Give them food and water, Elisha said. And send them back to their master, Elisha said. And so the king of Samaria did just that. When the enemy soldiers told the king what had happened, he decided to stop attacking God's people. And what about Elisha's servant? That day, Elisha's servant knew that God is always ready to help his children. God always hears our prayers, and he knows what need to be done. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you for all your angels all around and for protecting us and help us to help others. Be with us, protect us, and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hi everyone, my name is Margie, and today we're going to study the very heart of this lesson. I know, I know, you were expecting to see Anna here, but this lesson is so important that I wanted to step in for a moment to share it with you. It's the story of God's love for his people. You see, I'm a teacher. And although I teach many subjects, I especially love teaching about the Bible. I have a question for you. Do you know why God chose Israel instead of uh, Babylon, Egypt, or even China? Well, it's because Abraham was different from everyone else. He loved God. And he obeyed and trusted him so much that he is called the friend of God. Yes, and it was because of Abraham's faithfulness that God chose to make Abraham's children into a great nation. Hey, how do you feel when someone chooses you instead of your friends? Do you feel special? Well, it makes me feel good when someone invites me to their house or decides to give me something or wants to be my friend. So when God chose Israel to be his people, he wanted them to feel special. He said that they would be his treasure on earth, like the most important people in the world. In fact, what helped Jesus bear the pain and suffering when he died on the cross was to know that his sacrifice would make it possible for you to be with him forever. You see, God loved Israel so much. He did everything for them. He protected them when they were in danger and gave them everything they needed. He fed the manna from heaven and gave them water from a rock when they were thirsty. Do you know what? He even kept their sandals and clothes from wearing out while they wandered in the desert for 40 years. Can you imagine? God fulfilled all his promises to them and at last brought them to the promised land, just as he said he would. Even though Israel started off small, they grew and grew until they were more than several million people. They had a beautiful temple, a strong army, and very luxurious palaces. But the real reason Israel was special was because they were different. God was their king, and his law was like a wall of protection around them. For example, God only allowed them to eat healthy food. He gave them other rules too. They dressed differently from other nations. They could only marry people who believed in God and were forbidden from worshiping the gods of other nations. These rules kept their families safe and happy. Also, God set up a government that was fair to both men and women, and even children and foreigners. He gave them an economic system that provided enough food for anyone who was willing to work. God educated his people so that they were wise in all areas of life. Remember when the Queen of Sheba came to visit King Solomon? She came from far away and was so amazed at how great and powerful and wealthy Israel had become. Israel truly was the apple of God's eye. Wait, don't you know what that means? Well, the phrase, the apple of the eye, comes from the Old English language. People thought that your pupil, you know, the black part in the middle of your eye, was actually a solid, delicate black ball that needed protection. When something comes directly towards your eyes, well, you hurry to close them or cover them with your hands, right? Also, a tiny image of what is being looked at is reflected in the pupil, which is why in Hebrew, 
it's called the little man or the little daughter of the eye. The word pupil comes from the Latin pupia, which means little girl or defenseless person or an orphan left needing care from a guardian. So, when God said that Israel was the apple of his eye, he meant that he saw their need and would adopt them as his children. In the same way, God's people, not just the Israelites, but everyone, even you and me, all who believe in God and accept Jesus as their Savior are the apple of his eye. He rushes to protect us and sends his angels to keep us safe and his Holy Spirit to guide us on the right path. You know, I'm so happy when I see how God has protected me. You too? Wouldn't you be willing to love someone who loves you so much, who never hurts you, and who always makes you feel safe and happy? Oh, I'll serve him for the rest of my life. You know, God's love makes me so happy that I want to sing. Come on, sing with me. Father, you have chosen me as the apple of your eye. You gave to me your only son. For me he came to die. Your love is so great and strong. There's nothing I should fear when I obey your holy love to you. Wonderful. Now, let's make our project, okay? Let's make a collage of 10 ways that God has blessed you. You can draw the pictures yourself or print them from the computer. Give your collage the title, I'm the apple of God's eye. Then hang it up in your house so you'll never forget how much God loves you. Thanks for joining my Bible class today. I can't wait to see you again sometime. Bye-bye. That's our stories for today, boys and girls. In our Sabbath school lesson, remember, we help others when we pray for them. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. May God be with you all. Have a blessed week and happy Sabbath. See you next time. Bye.